Welcome back, guys. Now that you heard, now that you saw all the fluff up front, now it's time to get into the nuts and bolts of it, all right? If, you better pay attention, because uh, if you miss it, I'm doing my best to communicate that you do your best to receive it. Hang on to your sneakers. Welcome to my scribble sheet. I got more shit on this drawing, right? Well, let's get down here. This is where we're going. We're talking taper mate, right? I designed this thing to do moss tapers from number zero to four and a half. What is that? Hang on. All right. Here's the moss taper chop from zero to four and a half. That's what I talked about. The large end of the taper. 350.3561. Goddamn small. Four and a half. The large end. Inch and a half. 1.500, right? I, I designed this fixture, uh, this unit, or this taper mate, based on the length. See the length here? Going down. All right? The sign bar. I designed, I designed it around the sign bar. Usually on a sign bar, you want to indicate a sign bar longer than the length that you're going to machine. If you go down this, and you see that 3.19, all right, that's longer. That's a number three more taper, and it's longer than 3.19. It's a four-inch sign bar. Now you go down one more, number four. 4.06, 4 and a 16, sign bars four inches long. That's cutting it kind of close. When you get up here, the length of the, length of, the uh, of the cut is four and a half inches. We're pushing it. Can you make it work? Yeah, but I, it's nothing that floats my boat, all right? Hang on, I just want you to know, all right, can we go bigger? You have to design a bigger sign, a bigger uh, taper mate. All right, let's get into it. These are the nuts and bolts. Here's my scribble sheet. I got more shit in here than you can imagine. But I can pick out the, the stuff that you need to know. All right? I think I already told you that. We're talking taper mate number three moss taper. All right? Right here, we're gonna make one of these. You see it, taper mate number three, moss taper. Moss taper here, a body there for the features that you might want, all right? Why am I doing that? Because I wanna, all right? Let me show you this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyways, hang on. Um, these invisible lines piss me off. Every time I shut this computer down, it doesn't stay the same. Hang on. I'm pissed off at this shit. I want them as invisible lines. Put some invisible lines here. All right, you see that? Important to me. All right? What's your, all right? I'm looking at a four inch sign by here, and what you're looking at over there is a V block that's upside down with a rod in it. You see the rod? All right? And while, I, while I'm thinking of it, you see 
the centers in here, them, are, them centers are not 60 degree, they're radius type centers, R type center drills you use. You see it there? As a matter of fact, I'm going to put an R type center drill in the kit that we supply so nobody has to go chase it. All right? All right, now let, let me, let me uh, get into uh, the holding fixture. You see this? What you're looking at here is a, uh, is a V block, typical V block. Accurate, though. You understand? You see it here? You're looking at two views of the same V block. Well, there. There's one up here, one down there. You see they're identified as A. That one's identified as A. See the clamp on it? That's B. That's B. This side holds a smaller rod. This side holds a larger rod with the help of a standoff bushing put in between. Let me, let me just get into it now. All right? I'm going to show you what, what this is all about. I'm going to put this time bar on the top. Well, let me, do it. let me continue with the B block. Top view of the B block. You see it? I cut it here, showing a cross section of some quarter 20 holes. You see them? They're on both sides, right? They're symmetrical from the center line. I'm showing a rod here. All right? I'm going to put the rod in there, and I'm showing the clamp here. Two clamps. All right? It's exactly the same. Here's the side view of one clamp, top view of the clamp. Same thing again. Side view of the clamp, top view of the clamp. They're both exactly the same. All right? And they're designed to clamp this rod, a rod, in the V-block. All right? Let me move the, the rod into the V-block. You guys better pay attention. There's going to be a quiz after. Hang on, here we go. See the rod is in the B block. Okay, let me elaborate on the clamp. See the clamp is open. See it open? Why is it open? Because well let me let me just drop it on there, okay? I'm gonna drop these two clamps onto this V block so we can hold that rod in there. Hang on. Uh, let's take a good hard look at this. Obviously, you can see the taps hole in the clamp is uh, right on the center line. You see the open end of the clamp? This slot is wider than this circle. What's that circle? Quarter 20 hole. What's this circle? The chamfer. All right? All I'm doing is showing you. The, and why, why did I leave it open? All you, to, to remove it, all you got to do is take one screw out and the other one, you just loosen it and slide it out. I think that's pretty clever of me. I think I'm going to give myself a standing ovulation. Hang on. Take a bow, Jimmy. All right, now let's move on quickly. All right. I'll show you here. I'm going to put, I show a one-inch rod. Well, let me do this. I don't know if I did this. See that little diameter? You're wondering if it'll go, if it'll fit in the B block? The answer is yes. I'm going to show you. See how it fits, but it's going to take a long screw to hold that sucker down. You know what I mean? The odds of you having a small one like that are kind of 
No, but you can still get it done. That's 351 diameter. That's one inch, right? Let me show you on the one. This is more, the one inch is more in line with what you'd be doing. Utilities. I'll put that in there. Isn't this fun? Everybody having a good time? You see it? What I like about this is I put some meat in here from here to here, you know, so that the screw doesn't wobble and shit. It's gonna, it was sitting there nicely. Let me, all right. I don't know if I showed you this. All right, I, I might be redundant. I'm gonna do it again because I'm afraid I didn't do it. I designed this, this B block around the four, around the four inch sign, Bobby. I was concerned. See the magnets up here? I want them to hit a lot of steel so that they can hold. I'm gonna drop this on there. See that plenty of meat, see it there? You see the two pins, or the rollers of the sign bar? They hit right on the edge here, right? And that'll hold. Let me, I'll show you the other way. I'll show you how this one hits in here, all right? That's a side view of this sign bar. Kind of piece of shit. Oh Christ. Be patient, I'm gonna I'm retarded. See how the uh, how the sign bar fits nice and flat on it. You see these ten thirty two screw holes? Them are jack and screw holes. So that, because this, you ain't moving this sucker up easy, right? So you put a nylon screw, screw it down, and it'll jack it off instead, instead of you jacking off. You understand what I mean? All right, see the dowel hits right along this edge. Important that this edge is parallel to the axis of the lathe, all right? I think I gave you enough shit there, all right? Anyways, you know, you know how the, the arrangement is here. Now let me go over here, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do, the sequence of operations, how it's gonna work, and uh, you become a goddamn expert, all right? Right now we start here. With, we're gonna cut taper mate is gonna cut a number three moss taper. Right? Why a number three? Because it's perfect for a four inch sign bar. Alright? I'm showing you the taper here, the small diameter there, and a fairly long body here to put any feature you want on it. Alright? A number three moss taper. Why did I pick that? Here's another. You see, it says here. McMaster car, 1144 stress proof, all right? It's actually stress relieved. It's relatively hard. It's one and a quarter inch diameter, all right? Why did I pick it to a quarter? Because most lathes in the spindle will take an inch and a quarter diameter, the hole. So you can slip that sucker right in the three jaw chuck. If, if it's too big for your chuck, you got to put a send hole in some other way, all right? Let me show you this. We're talking about 
operation number one. All right? Let me give you some diameters. All right. See the diameter inch and a quarter, just like I did up there. The length, eight and a half inches. Is eight and a half inches important on the money? Of course not. Here's what you do. You take your bar stock, whatever it is, in my case, and you cut it a little longer than eight and a half inches, right, in a saw. Then you take it and you slip the sucker in a, in a three-jar chuck, nice and convenient. You come in here, you face it off, and you put a radius-type center drill in there. Guess what? I'm putting a radius center drill in the kit so you don't have to chase for that bullshit. You see it? You do, then when you don't want it, obviously you flip it. And you do the other end. And whatever that this length is, it don't mean shit. You're in a neighborhood of eight and a half inches. Nobody gives a shit. All right, now... You take this and you put it, you take that bar that you got. I don't care if the, the center hole and the OD run out. It doesn't matter. You got to have a pretty nasty chuck to make it run out too bad. But anyways, anybody with a half-assed decent chuck, that thing should run within five or ten grand. If it's worse than that, uh, you better take an aspen. Let me do this now. I'm going to put this, well, wait, let me do that. I'm going to take this line out so we can see a little easier. All right? I'm putting the thing in, I'm putting it in between centers. Uh, At least we don't want to have that stupid ladder. Let me put this one in. Just want to make a point here. All this shit's important to me. You see this? You see the radius there? I, I colored the center drill so you can see the difference. See how, how that 60 degree center, drill, uh, center hits tangent to that radius. Only one point, right? You know, same on both sides. You see it? Don't mean shit at this point because you're dead in line, all right? And what, what you're going to do here is you're going to, while you got it here, you're going to turn this diameter in other words, this center head, the headstock center is going to be running dead true, and you're going to have a ball bearing center running dead true, and they're both going to be in line, and you're going to turn this diameter dead straight. It's got to be dead straight, right? So that when you're done turning this and it's dead straight, Everything here, diameters are parallel to the axis of that lathe, all right? Are you digging it? Parallel, are you digging it? Is there an echo in here? All right. Now, now that you've turned that piece and it's dead concentric and dead parallel to the axis of the lathe, there must be an echo in here. I hear that word parallel a lot. All right, now, now we take this thing that we've turned and that's dead parallel, and we clamp it into the V-block. You see the V-block? You can't see the clamps because the V-block's upside down. But you see it here? All right, and you clamp it in, right? Well, guess what? This, this edge, this edge here, 
is parallel to that diameter and it's parallel to the axis. Everything's parallel. Why is that? It's goddamn important when you're using the sign bar that the pins here are dead parallel. You see? Let me do this now. Uh -uh. That's the key to this whole thing. Now I'm going to show you. Let's assume this has got the centers in it, everything's dead parallel. <coughs> How do you check it? What I did is I took one of them size pancake magnetic holders, dial indicator holders. I put it on the, on the compound lathe. When the lathe goes back and forth, obviously, it's parallel to the axis of the lathe. Let me show you how you check it. Maybe, I don't know if this god, if this goddamn indicator is at the right height or not. I don't give a shit. You can figure that out. Maybe you might have to do something different. I'm going to put this, let me do this. Watch me. Uh, yeah, maybe you can get a chuckle watching this. This step do something easier. Uh, dimension. Vertical. software don't take commands. Right, now I'm going to get rid of that stupid. Well, uh, it's hard to look good while you're fucking up. Hang on now. got that between centers, everything's parallel, you bring the indicator up against it and you're going to indicate it across it. Let me do a little exercise. See it? Oh, here we go. You run your indicator along the length of that just to check to make sure everything's cocoa, right? I'm going to show you, uh, let me do this. Now I'm going to rotate that sign bar. See what it says here, 1.4377 degrees. That's the key to all this. you got to know the angle, all right? Take this some bitch. Did you see a tip? Wasn't that exciting? Alright, I'm gonna drop it on here.
this thing is still dead straight, I dropped it, the sign bar on here, and I tipped it. Right here, you can see one side is touching like it should, and this is the stack height right here. You see it right there? That's the stack height for this 1.4377 degree angle. Now I'm going to tip the son of a bitch. I'm going to tip this like it would be in the tailstock offset, all right? I don't know if this is a good demonstration, but we'll try it. See it? I'm just going to show you that the parallel, this is tipped in the parallel is straight. It doesn't tell you about what the tailstock offset is, but it's just telling you that, well, let me do this. See it? 1.4377. That's about as exciting as watching Kate Smith take a douche. All right, now we're offset. The tailstock is offset. How much, I'll tell you a little later. I just want you to understand the mechanics of this. To prove it, it's straight, I'll move this sucker again, okay? See it? Same bullshit. You can visually see that that sucker's right on the edge. The CAD system uh, is not, it doesn't forgive anything. You fuck up and it's gonna let you know it. Okay, let me just put all this shit back and we'll go to the next step. All right. Now let's go here. We have offset the tailstock. Let me dimension this. The tailstock offset is 0.2148. All right, like that means a lot. Okay, let me put the centers in to make my point. This is the crescendo, the piasta resistance. If you leave this now, I'm going to get pissed off. Okay, let's see how that tapered center drill is going to look with the piece tipped. You see it? Now the piece is tipped. Look good before. Well, I'll be dipped in ape shit. Look. It's still tension to that radius. You got a ball bearing center in there with pressure on it this way. It's gonna rotate nicely. If you had a dead center, right? And would it just touch you, burn a sucker up. You want a ball bearing center? You want a tapered radius type center drill hole? And you know, and like that. So let's go here. This is a headstock center. Running dead true, it actually rotates with, with the material. All right, but it's got to be dead true, but how does it hit? Because as it revolves, you're going to get that wonky shit. You see that? Now that's nice and tapered. It's nice tangent. Really looks good. That will rotate smooth. When it's rotating smooth, guess what? 
you're going to get a nice smooth cut. If you had a 60 degree center in a 60 degree center hole, you would have a geometric uh, conflict. The thing would run wobbly. You wouldn't know it because it would be wallowing out the center hole, but it would show up in the diameter of the piece you turn. Let me do this now. Hang on. What I got here is a 3 8 high speed tool, ground by hand, nice radius on it. You hone the radius, high speed steel. I know you guys are queer for all that fucking carbide and shit. You know, uh, that don't work in the world I live in. High speed will leave you, if you hone that edge, it will leave you a nice finish. You understand? Carbide has got kind of like a negative break right on the edge. What they like to do is burn it off. I like to turn it off, right? Hang on. That's my uh, my opinion. You know, I come from a place that's uh, a gazillion years old. Okay, now we're gonna turn this. I'm gonna turn this up to the up to the shoulder. See that? That'll give you a nice finish because it'll be rotating smooth, nice high speed tool. Huh? You'll be looking good, right? People will come from miles around to hear you play your music when the sun goes down. Maybe someday your name will be in lights singing Johnny Be Good tonight. Woo! All right, you see what I got there? That's the ticket. All right? Now, I'm going to tell you something. After you see this, you email me. If you don't understand it, I'll, I'll do it a, a gazillion times until you do understand it. All right? I don't know if I, if I laid it out clear enough, right? But you got to let me know what you think of this. If you, if you understand it, tell me you understand it. If you don't understand it, Tell me you don't understand it. If you don't email me, I'll get pissed off. I'll go down there, rip out one of your fucking eyeballs, and eat it in front of the other one. How do you like them apples? By the way, taking a lighter tone, this says thanks for watching to all you cuties out there. All right? Be good. Don't forget to email me. Don't comment on YouTube. I don't want to hang our laundry out there in public. You understand? Email me. All right? You want my email address? It's right here. You see it? Email. Jimmy in this at the cushion of the dot com. All right? Like they say in Tinseltown, that's a wrap.